Norway is one of eight countries whose territory intersects with the Arctic Circle, located roughly 66 and a half degrees north of the equator. The vast majority of the landmass inside of the Arctic Circle is classified as tundra, a cold, barren biome that lacks extensive vegetation and can experience average temperatures well below minus 30 in the winter months. One of the tundra ecoregions is known as Russian Arctic Desert, which contains one of Norway's most spectacular destinations. The Svalbard archipelago comprises nine main islands and seven national parks, including the four largest in the country. It is here where some of Norway's most unique species can be found, many of which are only present at certain times of year. Visit Svalbard categorizes the year into three seasons. Northern Lights winter runs from October to February. It is the darkest time of year and consequently the best time to see the Northern Lights. During this period, Svalbard experiences polar night, which occurs between mid-November and late January, when the sun never rises above six degrees below the horizon. Although many of Svalbard's migratory animals won't arrive until summer, some of its most sought-after residents abide year-round, including polar bears, with roughly 3,000 found between the Svalbard archipelago and the Barents Sea, the Svalbard rock ptarmigan, a subspecies of rock ptarmigan known to store up to 32% of its body weight as fat to survive the winter, and the Svalbard reindeer, a small subspecies of reindeer that weighs up to 200 pounds and is endemic to the archipelago. In the aquatic realm, the beluga whale is one of several marine mammals that can be found year-round, in addition to the walrus, which can be observed resting on the sea ice. The second season runs from March 1st until May 16th and is known as sunny winter. In the northern hemisphere, this period would usually be referred to as spring, but due to the Arctic conditions, this designation isn't appropriate in this part of the world. As the days become longer and the nights become shorter, it is towards the end of sunny winter that Svalbard begins to experience midnight sun, the opposite of polar night, when the sun stays above the horizon for months on end. Finally, polar summer runs from May 17th until the end of September, and providing a respite from the long winter months, it is the most popular period to visit Svalbard. Midnight sun lasts until late August when the sun finally falls below the horizon, and it is during these summer months that many of the archipelago's migratory birds arrive. One such animal is the barnacle goose, which spends its summers in Central Europe and the British Isles before migrating north to the Arctic to breed during the summer. This season is also the best time of year to spot Svalbard's migratory whale species. After a long swim from the tropics, whales congregate in the icy waters to stock up on food before heading south again for the winter. The topography of Svalbard makes the archipelago even more unique featuring dramatic mountainous terrain that rises abruptly from the shore and peaks at over 5,500 feet further inland at the summit of Newtontoppen, which was named after Sir Isaac Newton. Sitting 1,000 kilometers southwest of Svalbard is the island of Jan Mayen, the site of Norway's only active volcano, most recently erupting in 1985. It is to the mainland we are headed, however, to the country's most mountainous region, an area that also exhibits the highest density of national parks. Dovrefjall Sundalsfjella National Park is one of the region's most well-known, playing host to a population of musk oxen, which were reintroduced to Norway from Canada in the 1930s, after extinction from hunting in World War II. The musk ox trail was opened in 2017 and amounts to a network of paths, giving visitors a better opportunity at spotting these incredible animals. Dovrefjell is also categorized as an important bird area, acting as a breeding site for several bird of prey species, including the northern hawk owl and the rough-legged buzzard, which spends the winter in temperate areas further south. The majority of the national parks in Norway's central highlands are found in an eco-region known as Scandinavian montane birch forests and grasslands. The trees here are dominated by downy birch, providing contrast to the conifer forests found throughout much of the rest of the country. Some of Europe's largest glaciers are found in this area and feed beautiful alpine lakes packed with various species of trout. 
This ecoregion is found at the country's highest elevations, which on the mainland also equates to the areas with the lowest temperatures. Jutenheimen National Park is home to the country's highest peak, Galopigen, and in addition to mountain hares, which vary their fur colour by season, it is also one of the best places to see wolverines, one of the area's most well-known predators. Wolverines have been known to prey on animals up to five times their size, but usually scavenge carcasses or prey on smaller animals, including the Norway lemming. These rodents are subject to a population cycle that sees numbers balloon to unsustainable levels every few years, resulting in high mortality rates and gifts a short break to other prey species. Given the cold alpine conditions in Norway, the country is home to just nine reptile species, at least two of which are found throughout much of the country, including the viviparous lizard and the adder, also known as the common European viper, that can grow up to 80 centimetres in length, and while venomous, is not considered deadly for the vast majority of humans. The western portion of the Central Highlands is unique for several reasons. Most notably, many of Norway's spectacular fjords wind their way down to the ocean from inside of this region, including Sognifjord, Norway's longest at 204 kilometers, and Geirangefjord, which by some travesty of justice is part of Norway's one and only natural UNESCO World Heritage Site. In addition, red deer are most commonly found towards the west of the country and are the country's second largest species of cervid. Breeding or rutting season could be observed in late October, and females would give birth to calves here around late May to early June. The northern section of Montane Forest was the site of a particularly interesting study published in Ecology and Evolution in 2021. Researchers measured the home ranges of European lynx in Norway, which represents the northernmost extent of their range, and found that lynx in this area exhibit some of the largest home ranges of all carnivore species, averaging up to 2,600 square kilometers for males and 1,500 square kilometers for females, made up mostly of alpine tundra. Bordering the Central Highlands is the largest ecoregion in Europe, although just a small percentage is found inside of Norway's borders. Scandinavian and Russian taiga is home to a handful of Norway's national parks, but a no less impressive collection of wildlife, including one of the smallest populations of grey wolf in Europe. As of 2023, 43 to 44 individuals live solely inside of the country's borders, and 46 to 48 individuals roam between Norway and Sweden. A wolf zone exists in the southeast of the country designated by the Norwegian parliament. Legally speaking, wolves inside of this area are protected, although this is the subject of controversy. These forests are also home to several of Norway's deer species. Roe deer are the smallest of the cervids in Norway and are relatively new to the country, arriving at the turn of the 20th century. They were once considered the same species as the Siberian roe deer, but populations roughly east and west of Europe's border are now considered a separate species. One of the tiger's most famous inhabitants is the moose, the country's largest terrestrial animal. In Europe, these animals are known as elk, which is not the same as the species from North America and East Asia. There are estimated to be between 120 to 150,000 moose in Norway alone, and thankfully this species is listed as least concern. Tiger, otherwise known as boreal or snow forest, is characterized by a cooler climate than the temperate forests found further south and as such is more heavily populated with mammals and birds than it is with amphibians and reptiles. Despite Norway being home to just six amphibian species, the common frog is known to be particularly resistant to colder climates, and as such is found throughout much of the country, including the taiga. Several of the country's ten bat species can also be spotted in this area, including the common noctule, which looks a lot more elegant when in flight. For other aerial specialists, this ecoregion is home to several important bird areas, including a nature reserve named Gaulorsen, which is part of the Trondheimfjord wetland system. The tidal mudflats here are home to a wide range of birds, including various species of sandpiper, in addition to hosting the spawning grounds for several fish species, including the Atlantic salmon. With such a gigantic coastline, the aquatic biome is one of Norway's most alluring features, and is home to a wide range of fascinating animals. 
The mollusks of the area include the curled octopus, also known as the horned octopus, a species found throughout the northeast Atlantic, and a particularly colourful species of nudibranch, which even appeared on Norway's 10 krona postage stamp. All along Norway's western coastline, whale watching is one of the most popular activities, and nowhere has a greater reputation for spotting orcas as the fjords of Tromsø in the north. Orcas are said to be attracted to this region for the high number of migratory herring, and the winter months between October to January are not only the best time of year to see killer whales, but humpbacks as well. Other marine mammal species on the west coast include sperm whales, which can be spotted year-round, and many species of seal that we'll meet in the next section. Southern Norway is home to a different set of animals, most notably its dolphin species. The white-beaked dolphin is the most common in Norway's waters, along with Riso's dolphin, which is protected in a joint agreement with other North Atlantic countries. They exhibit a fascinating coloration that varies considerably. Juveniles are darker, with grey and brown areas, a coloration that fades with age, and many adults also exhibit prominent scars that occur normally but heal differently in this species. The two ecoregions we've covered so far make up the majority of Norway's territory, but we have three particularly unique areas left to cover, starting with a picturesque peninsula in the north. Kola Peninsula Tundra is located mostly in Russia and makes up the smallest portion of Norway's landmass, covering just half of the Varanga Peninsula. Nevertheless, the landscape here is some of the most beautiful in the country and is home to a collection of seals, most of which don't venture much further south. In Norway, the bearded seal is found only along its northern coastline and in Svalbard, and is characterised by its long, moustache-like whiskers. The ringed seal is equally unique, and while it exhibits a mostly Arctic distribution, is also found in the Baltic Sea. As a side note, this species is the primary prey animal for polar bears, whose range falls short of the Norwegian mainland. In addition to Varangahaleyr National Park, the peninsula is also home to several important bird areas and a collection of colourful duck species. The King Ida is a species of sea duck that exhibits a particularly eye-catching breeding plumage, which is most prominent from late autumn through to midsummer. The long-tailed duck comes from the same family of sea ducks and breeds in all of the countries that exhibit an Arctic coastline. As we move further south, the second of these coastal ecoregions is known as Scandinavian coastal conifer forests. This habitat is found in several areas from the southern tip to a particularly famous archipelago in the north, sat just inside of the Arctic Circle. The landscape in Lofoten is one of the most easily recognisable in the country, exhibiting steep, narrow mountains that rise sharply from the ocean and iconic, colourful buildings dotted around the shoreline. Historically, Lofoten has played an important role in the Norwegian fishing industry, especially in the winter months when Norwegian cod frequent the area to spawn. In addition to attracting humans to the area, birds of prey such as the white-tailed eagle also come here to fish, albeit in a much different style. The Eurasian otter can also be observed in the area, feasting on fish and crabs in the river mouths. This eco-region, and Norway's western coast in general, receives some of the highest levels of rainfall in the country and is also warmer than the mountainous areas we explored earlier on. To the south, Runda is one of the country's smallest nature reserves but is home to a very large population of iconic birds. Atlantic puffins spend a great deal of their time at sea but frequent coastal areas to breed. Runda is home to Norway's southernmost colony comprising an estimated 50 to 70,000 breeding pairs. Other seabirds such as the razorbill can also be found here during breeding season, although this colony is much smaller with an estimated 1 to 2,000 breeding pairs. The southern coastline also features an ecoregion found only in this area, known as Sarmatic Mixed Forests. Although this ecoregion features some of the lesser known national parks, the southern tip of the country represents the northernmost range for many animals, making it one of the most unique areas in Norway for wildlife. Amphibians such as the colourful moor frog are more common in this region. The males of the species turn blue during mating season, and although its range extends further north in Sweden and Finland, in Norway it is only found south of Oslo. Other amphibians include the common toad 
and the Great Crested Newt, both of which can be found further north. Representing the reptiles are the slow worm, a type of legless lizard, and the grass snake, a non-venomous species that preys mainly upon amphibians. Small mammals are not totally immune to the grass snake, however, and the rodents of the area include the yellow-necked mouse and the long-tailed field mouse, both of which are found in the south of the country. Preying on these species is the European polecat, a popular pet that has a very small range within Norway, much like the European fallow deer, which is the least numerous of the country's cervids. As a bonus, in addition to the regions already covered, Norway lays claim to Antarctic territory, in addition to a particularly remote island. Bovea, or Bove Island, is a small, uninhabited volcanic island found 1,700 kilometers from mainland Antarctica and is dubbed the world's most remote nature reserve. Bovea is a breeding site for 12 bird species, including the black-bellied storm petrel and the southern fulmar, a species that is also found in Antarctica. In addition to a healthy population of Antarctic fur seals, the island is also home to several species of penguin, including chinstrap and macaroni penguins, which number around 5,000 individuals between the two species. To the south, Norway also lays claim to another small island and a slice of Antarctica known as Kvinmold Land. It is here where emperor penguins make their yearly migration inland to breed, a journey you can learn about in this video, exploring all 19 species of penguin. Thank you so much for watching.